Elon Musk seems to have a phobia about artificial intelligence, but I'm not sure if it's warranted. Neither are Bill Gates or Mark Zuckerberg. Hi, I'm Ben Solnes with Teslanomics, and today we're going to take a look at why Elon is so concerned about this and why others are less so. To understand why Elon is so afraid, we need to first understand what artificial intelligence or AI is. In computers, artificial intelligence is the field of work that involves creating programs that can mimic human intelligence, such as playing chess or solving algebra problems. While today we think of those as obvious examples that a computer can perform exceedingly well, when the field of AI research started at Dartmouth College in 1956, these were astonishing feats. Some of the founders at the time were so excited about the field of AI that they proclaimed machines will be capable within 20 years of doing any work a man can do. So remember, this was the 1960s when the field of AI really started to ramp up. Not exactly the era you think of when you think about the advancements in all of technology and computers. In fact, computers around then were barely a thing and mostly focused on processing complex equations, which actually led to some pretty amazing things, such as putting a man on the moon. Think about that for a second. In the era where a five megabyte hard drive, barely enough to hold a couple of photos by today's standards, had to be hauled onto a freight container and lifted using heavy machinery, we were able to combine what humans know and the calculation power that a computer gives us to figure out exactly what we need to to put a person on the moon and return them back to Earth safely. So with as primitive as things were, remember five megabytes was had to be hauled on a truck and on an airplane with heavy machinery, and here I have 64 gigabytes of full 13,000 times more storage, about the size of a fingernail. I mean, it's, it's un, unfathomable how far we've come since those days, and it only was about 60 years ago. So was that the first AI system? Was that really something that was artificially intelligent that mimicked human behavior? By today's standards, many would say no. But if you zoom out a bit, you could argue that the computers used in the 60s to land a man on the moon were merely imitating what humans could do if given the time. They just were able to do it faster and more accurately. So if artificial intelligence is merely creating machines and programs and things that mimic human intelligence, What's the big worry? Why are we so afraid of this? Well, we've come a long way since the 1960s, and along the way, we had many advancements in technology, namely the internet. Now, the internet is when things started to get a little bit more science fiction-like, and visions of the world where machines had taken over started to become, or at least seem, a bit more real. Because now with the internet, computers and machines could be controlled remotely, giving us that global sense of there could be something that takes over and turns the machines against us here now that they're all connected together in this giant network. As well, data could be transferred, which led to some major innovations in the field of artificial intelligence with the practice of machine learning. With machine learning, the idea was that we could teach the computer how to learn on its own, given just a little bit of instruction. This has led to many advancements that are fueling the AI hype cycle that we're in today. No longer just an advanced calculator. The AI systems we know of today are doing complex things like beating people at Jeopardy, translating hundreds of languages instantly, and soon they'll be able to drive us home after a night out with friends. So far what we're talking about here are systems that are known as artificial narrow intelligence and some may call it weak AI. Artificial narrow intelligence is when the system is focused on a specific task and really incapable of doing anything else. All of the examples we've seen so far fall into this category. Although IBM's Watson is pushing the boundary a little bit with its ability to understand a multitude of topics. So far so good, right? We have these just incredibly smart computers that can do really cool things but there's no big fear of them taking over and becoming self-aware, is there? Well, maybe, and it has to do with the next level of AI called artificial general intelligence, or strong AI. This is where AI systems will be able to reason, plan, understand complex ideas, and find solutions to problems quickly by learning from experience. Okay, this is where things start to get a little scary. If you've seen the sci-fi movie Ex Machina, you'll remember Ava, a human-like android that is generally intelligent. She's able to trick her guests into helping her escape. If we achieve this level of AI, things could get bad quick, as they did in the movie for her friend. So if that wasn't enough, there is yet another level called artificial superintelligence. 
Leading AI thinker Nick Bostrom defines superintelligence as an intellect that is much smarter than the best human brains in practically every field, including scientific creativity, general wisdom, and social skills. This is where Elon and others like Ray Kurzweil and Stephen Hawking are really worried. If, rather when, we as humans create something this intelligent, we will no longer be able to control it, and it could easily run wild, killing us all. And once we lose control of a system like this, we won't even know how to stop it. The intelligence it has will be so far beyond our own that we won't even be able to figure out how it works. Even if we assume it's good versus being evil, the needs it has will differ greatly from our own, likely resulting in a conflict that we just can't win. So yeah, it could happen, and we probably should be a little concerned. However, the rate we're going, it's still a ways out. I mean, Siri can't even play songs from Spotify yet. In the meantime, the battle between Elon, Bill Gates, Mark Zuckerberg, and our other tech leaders will wage on, hopefully bringing some sense to the discussion. Just not the super intelligent, self-aware type of sense. Not yet. So thanks for watching. And if you like this video, please give it a big thumbs up. And if you're new here, consider subscribing. Each week we break down the data and economics and some of the more technical aspects of companies like Tesla that are really just changing our world. And remember, when you free the data, your mind will follow. Thanks for watching.